Hello and welcome to today's yin class. We will be doing a 60 minute yin yoga practice and you just need a few things to get started. So I recommend a mat, something that will give you a little bit of support on the floor that you will be practicing on, um, a blanket if you have one, a block or two. If you don't have a block, you can definitely use pillows of any size. If you have a bolster at home, that would be great, but pillows really work. Um, I've taught many home yin yoga sessions with my family and just cushions from the couch. So let's get started. I'll explain it as we go so we can just get rolling. So I'm gonna invite you to meditate with me first to set the intention. And so you can sit down, find a comfortable seat, maybe just easy pose Sukhasana, or you can um, sit up on a blanket or a pillow to give you a little bit more height. <clears throat> and if you're not comfortable seated for meditation, you can always lay down. I'd also like to introduce Riley, the yoga dog, to us. She's been in pretty much every video I've made, and she's gonna be click clacking around the video. I have hardwood, so <clears throat> I'm sure you'll hear her moving around. So go ahead and find your meditation seat, whether it's seated or lying down, and we're gonna just start to drop into stillness. the hands to the body so either palms facing down on your thighs or you can bring one hand to your belly and one hand to your heart and we'll just start to breathe here relaxing your jaw relaxing your eyes relaxing your forehead Staying with watching your breath. If you can close your eyes, go ahead and do that. And just see if you can get more and more comfortable with just being with yourself. You may notice that your mind starts to get really active. You might find yourself wandering into thinking and that's what the brain does, it's a thinking brain. So meditation doesn't mean that you stop your thoughts. It means you observe them and you notice what's coming up. And when you notice that you're thinking, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. You can use a few different techniques, but one that I'll recommend today will just be to label your thoughts thinking. So um, once you are aware that you've been hooked and taken away into another place, right? You're not here in this moment when you're thinking about X, Y, Z, what happened yesterday or what could happen tomorrow or what you wish was different about this conversation you had with your mother or you're anticipating a phone call you have to make tomorrow. So wherever your mind wandered off to, you just notice it and you label it, oh, I'm thinking again. And you bring yourself right back to a focal point. And the focal point we're going to use right now in this meditation is going to be this next out breath. So focusing on the exhale. And taking 
And another breath in. And out. Breathing in. And letting it go. So we're going to breathe a three-part breath. It's going to be an oceanic breath. So I want you to breathe in through your nose and focus on your belly, your rib cage, your chest, and slightly uh, hold the breath in a second or two at the top of the inhale. And then exhale through the nose, your chest, your rib cage, your belly and a slight retention at the bottom of the exhale. And then drawing the breath in again through the nose, filling up your belly, your rib cage, your chest, holding your breath at the top of the inhale, and then exhaling through the nose, your chest, your rib cage, your belly, hold your breath at the bottom of the exhale, and then breathing in through the nose. Hold your breath at the top. Exhale through your nose. Hold your breath at the bottom. Taking a breath in. Hold your breath at the top. Exhale through your nose. Hold your breath at the bottom. And then just cycle the breath now. So through the nose, and you don't have to hold your breath in between now. So the breath is just cycling. I like to envision an infinity symbol as I'm breathing. So when the breath hits the bottom, it just goes right back into the inhale. And when the inhale gets to the top, it starts to go right back into the exhale. So it's a continuous loop, no pause. And really trying to make that breath fluid so it's not too clunky or staggered but that you feel a fluidity and ease, your face is relaxed, you're not having to concentrate too hard, but you start to flow with your breath effortlessly. If you can keep your eyes closed, do that. And we're going to invoke an invitation or an opportunity to be intentional. And so what does that mean? That just means that you will dedicate this practice to someone, something, an ideology, a purpose, a platform, a people group, you can dedicate the energy of healing, of restoration and nourishment, and you can also have an intention that is just for yourself. It can be for your own soul nourishment, for your body, for your joints, your tissues, your nervous system to be hydrated and stimulated and loved. So just set that here. Usually it's what's bubbling up. It's usually just right there. You can take it and you can use that as your focal point of intention. Remember to keep coming back to your breath over and over again. So we're gonna start moving into our first yin posture, and that is going to be caterpillar pose. 
So caterpillar is really um, just Pachamotanasana if you practice Hatha Yoga. And you can do it seated on a blanket. It just gives you more cushion if you have like bony sits bones. Um, it also can be on just the mat. Or you can elevate up onto a pillow if you need some support. Just getting your hips up a little bit, especially if you're really tight <clears throat> and you find that you're the kind of person that may have to lean back because you have a lot of tension in your hips. So whichever way you decide to sit for caterpillar pose, you're gonna wanna have some sort of prop with you. Maybe it's a blanket, a pillow, or a block. And you're going to just let your shoulders just slump forward as if you have like horrible teenage texting posture, right? So you're just going to let the whole spine round forward and you're gonna find either that you let your head dangle, that you let the cervical spine get a nice um, tension to it because it's just hanging in space, or you're gonna rest your head on something, and maybe it's your hands on top of a block. Maybe it's your head directly on that prop. But what I want you to do is to relax your legs as you do this, and make sure you're not squeezing or pulling. It's not active, it's passive. So you're just completely schlumping forward into the posture and cycling that breath. So once you find your edge, once you find your first edge, you're going to sit for about 60 seconds here and just breathe. So once you've sat for a little bit, you may have noticed an edge starts to dissipate. And it's very subtle and that's why we stay still. That's why we resist the urge to fidget and move, to look around the room. It's why we stay once we've found our edge. And when you start to feel, it's almost like a melting or an opening. That will be the invitation to your next edge. And so usually in a yin, if we're holding the posture for you know anything more than two minutes, you're going to feel some opening. Now that doesn't mean that you won't get to a final edge. If say for example you're very flexible and your belly is on your thighs, there will be bony compression where your ribs are hitting your femur and you can't go any further. It's not like you can go through your legs and down through the floorboards. So your edges are going to evolve and they're going to create more opportunity to go deeper. But you wanna make sure you're constantly asking yourself, what am I feeling? What do I need? Is this where I should stay and breathe and feel into my body? Or is the invitation asking me to melt a little bit further? And sometimes it's just a centimeter. Sometimes it's just like moving one hand and then you go down a little bit deeper or moving another hand and then you go a little bit deeper, right? So it's very slow. Yin is incredibly slow. It's the polar opposite of power vinyasa. And you're gonna be here for quite a bit of time. So I'm gonna let you stay for about three minutes longer. I'm gonna go grab my timer. But imagine you're still in that caterpillar shape. 
and I will be right back. Taking those deep breaths. So imagining that metronome of breath, really feeling into where the breath is in your body. So maybe you feel it in your back body, in your ribs. Maybe you feel the breath nourishing and just stimulating the hip joints. Maybe you're feeling in between each vertebra with your breath. So you kind of use the breath almost as a guide exploring the inner space of your body. And the breath is very similar to Ujjayi Pranayam, but it's cooler, it's more feminine, more moon-like, so it's going to be lighter. It's still through the nose, it's still cycling that life force through the body, but it's much, much more subtle and internal. Making sure you're not engaging your hamstrings, just relaxing the muscles in the lower body. You can have a slight turn on at the core and around the spine, um, but I would recommend relaxing the hamstrings and the calves. Definitely relaxing your face. And we're gonna start to make our way out of caterpillar. So going really, really, really slowly. You can make any noises that you want. <sighs> you can moan. You can, you know, make a scrunched up face just so you can release the tension. Ha! Ah. And I like to just kind of lean back a little bit at first because I was just in so much of a forward fold that I just want to counter the yin posture. So we'll do a windshield wiper side to side and that just means letting your knees kind of flop off to the left and looking over your left shoulder really gently, it's not a, a deep twist, it's pretty chill. And then we'll do windshield wipers over to the other shoulder. Looking over the right, gently, just rinsing out your spine. And then from there, we're gonna come into butterfly, which is Baddha Konasana in the Hatha system. And so from here, um, maybe you still want the blanket under you. I know um, I have students who have really just bony sits bones and they cannot sit for too long without needing extra cushions. So it's a thought. Okay, I like to create like a Lego stack. So first the heels, it's up to you how close you want them to your body. So one hand distance between heel and pubic bone is good. Um, two is also really good. It just changes kind of where you feel it in your body and only you know what you need in your body. I'm not there with you in your body and even if I were there with you, I still wouldn't know what was going on inside of you. So stacking uh, like a Lego stack of props could be helpful so that you have more to hang on, right? And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold forward in a kind of rounded shoulder, the spine is going into like a C shape instead of like hinging forward flat back. It's like you're curling down. And so this can be done with just a block if you already know, maybe your hips are really open. 
if you need support because your knees are really top, like high and tight, you can slide some extra stuff underneath your knees so they feel supported. And so whatever you have, you're gonna use. Um, everybody has different props at home and is gonna use different stuff. So we're just rounding forward. Letting the shoulders completely slump forward, okay? There's not a better word for it. Um, so once you've found that edge, stay. Try not to look forward. Try not to even look at the, at the computer or your phone or whatever device you're using. Just try to listen to my voice. So just staying slumped forward, relaxing your neck. Staying in that rounded forward position, you're going to use that breath as your focal point. So we're going to be in this position for six minutes and as you use your breath to feel into your body, I want you to see if you're holding tension any place that doesn't need to be holding. Sometimes we grip and we hold in our hips. And so with your next breath in, see if you can relax into your hips even more. Breathing in through the nose. and out the nose. Notice if you're holding tension in your belly. See if you can soften your belly, especially on the exhale. Noticing your back body Notice the, the glutes where we hold so much tension. The glutes are really one of the places in the body that if we could get a release there, the chain reaction to the whole body would be incredible. You know, when you go and you get a massage um, after this whole thing is over, right? Um, and you can go get a massage, which I highly recommend. Have your massage therapist go right to the glutes and it just melts the body. It, it cues the parasit parasit <laughs> parasympathetic nervous system into relaxation. So if you can just relax your glutes, take a deep breath in. And then using that breath to notice other parts of the body that maybe are kind of on autopilot, parts that you don't even notice you habitually hold with tension. I know for me, usual suspects are my shoulders. I tend to kind of hold this tension in my shoulders and it doesn't even have to be over exaggerated during the day. It can just be just one little part of my traps that just likes to hold. And it's not until I breathe into that space or I physically touch it with my hand that it relaxes. So letting your shoulders round forward even more.
staying in the posture, you are more than halfway through. There's just two minutes to go. And with these last two minutes, see if maybe, maybe your props are supporting you in more of a restorative way. And that if your body has given you the cue that it's melted, it's ready for just a little bit more depth, you could always just move a prop a little bit further away from you and then come in a little bit deeper. And sometimes it's literally an inch or a centimeter. And sometimes it's more. Sometimes you have to like literally move a bolster further forward or move a pillow completely out of the way so that you can come down deeper. It, you're almost there. Stay exactly where you are. See if you can cycle the breath even deeper. And you've got about 15 seconds to go. So we're going to go very, very slowly to come out of the posture. And I recommend going even slower than you think you should. So, unfolding your spine, using your hands to support you as you walk yourself back up. If you were really, really deep, you're probably going to need to make a noise, moan, sigh. <sighs> And then we're going to counter with just leaning back into your hands. So your hands are just going back behind you. And then ooh, extending the legs out in front and kind of wiggling your feet, right? Just wiggling, leaning back into your hands. Maybe circling your feet. Ah, okay. And so from there, we're going to come into half saddle. So before we do that, we're gonna set up a little bit of a structure for the back. Now, I don't recommend um, leaning back for anyone who has not been practicing yoga for some time. So if you're really, really tight in your hips or your back, or you have had any kind of um, surgery or injury, I probably wouldn't recommend reclining back in this posture. Okay, so have a couple of pillows, blankets, whatever, um, to support you in this. Um, this is really great for runners and cyclists. So you're going to turn so that your props are all laid out here. You see I elevated the bolster with a pillow first. So it's at an angle, right? It's not just flat down. That'd be really acute for my, for my um, low back. And then I'm going to put another blanket right at the base of it. So again, it's, it's not creating too much of a back bend at my lumbar spine. So from here, I'm going to sit up onto this blanket. I'm going to extend out my right leg and I'm going to lean off kind of to my right glute and start to bend my left leg over. So this is half saddle. It's half hero's pose, right? It's half um, of the shape. You could always do the full saddle if you want to, where both knees are bent, like full hero's pose. Um, but if you're new to yoga, 
this might, you might be feeling this as it is. Just having this foot flipped like this and kind of like a dancer's point, we don't do that very often, you know, especially if you're not um, stretching or putting your foot in this uh, plantar flexion very often, right? So that alone, you might notice there's a lot of tension in the ankle, totally normal. I see it all the time. You're not at all alone. So option if this is like, I can't even do this. This is not accessible for me. You can always choose to lay down on your side instead and bend either your top leg back and rest kind of your top foot on a block and do a gentle quad stretch that way. Or you can do the bottom leg and do a gentle quad stretch that way, okay? And you can always lay down, relax, and the breath is going to be nourishing. If you can sit, sit, okay? And we're gonna stretch <laughs> our left quads. And it's not just a stretch, okay? So what it is, is it's deep compression to the knee joint. Um, we're going to get compression at the lower back if we recline back, right? So the, the lower vertebra and the sacrum are all going to be compressing at the low back and a little bit in the vertebra as well in the back bend. Now, if we're just sitting here, we're also getting compression at the hip joint and we're also um, having that plantar flexion, right? So we're feeling different compression in the foot. So that's what we want. We wanna have that gentle but efficient compression and we're now stimulating and nourishing our joint capsules, our bones, and we're creating more of a stimulation for collagen and hydration of the fascia so that there could be information flowing, okay? So information flows through the fascial system and the energetic body, the meridians. Now, whether or not you subscribe to that you don't have to, to get the benefits from sitting in this posture. We've already been sitting here for more than two minutes. And if you want to recline back at any degree, you are welcome to do that very slowly, okay? So I recommend maybe just bringing the hands back at first and feeling how that feels. And breathing into it. Relaxing this straight leg, relaxing your right leg and relaxing as much as you can into your bent leg. Maybe you come down a little bit more and you're like, yep, that's it. Maybe you add more props, you know, so that you feel supported. Maybe you come back even more and you start to recline. Maybe it's a full drop back and you notice what's happening in your body. You notice the sensations, you notice the psoas and what's happening there. You notice the ribs, you notice the chest. So we'll stay for four more minutes here and it'll be seven minutes total.
continue to breathe and use the quiet, the stillness to again be curious about what's happening in your body. And you can use the sensations that you're feeling in your body as a focal point. And that focal point is what will bring you back when you start to get hooked into thinking, which is the training of our minds, right? That is the ability to notice when you are thinking about a million different things, right? You're thinking about not what you're doing here and you're possibly not thinking about your breath. And you just notice, you go, oh, I stopped feeling. I stopped feeling what's happening in my left low back. And now I feel into that space and it pulls me back from wherever I just was in thinking land. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And one more full breath in. And full breath out. Again, going very, very slow to come out of half saddle, especially if you are in the reclining variation. So there's really no one size fits all for coming out, but I recommend making noise. I like to sound so ha. Ooh. Ah, woof. If you're at home with your kids or uh, a partner or loved one, it's always fun for them to be like, what is happening over there? You know, what is, what's going on? So now I'm just palpating my left knee, my left quad, giving a little self massage, scrubbing out the back of the knee and maybe even um, taking a fist and scrubbing out the low back if you did the back bend. If you were seated the whole time, maybe you just are wiggling it out and even maybe digging into the left hip with your right thumb. So we'll come to the other side, right? So go as slow as you need to to come to the other side. There's no rush and our bodies aren't always symmetrical. So you may find that you come on this side and you're like, holy mother of God, this is so tight. Or, whoa, this one's really open. So just notice and adjust. And if you have to recline on one side or not, or lay down on your side and not do the seated posture, it doesn't have to be completely exactly the same, right? We're gonna work up to symmetry, but the body is not always symmetrical, you know, each femur has a different head. Just sometimes there's like little tiny variation and sometimes it's really obvious if you look at skeleton bones. So, okay, we're gonna sit up, take some deep breaths, feel into uh, the body, make sure you're adjusting. It's not red light, green light. You're not at red light and you're not allowed to move. You can move until you get the right spot. You want it to be like the Goldilocks position. Like your porridge should not be too hot where you burn your tongue. It also shouldn't be cold. You want it to be the perfect temperature. So find the perfect porridge for your body and then choose whatever you need to support you. And maybe it's just kind of hanging out and, and leaning off to one side, sitting there for a few cycles of breath. Maybe you're uber flexible. You can just go right into it. So it's not right or wrong and there's no like hierarchy. The hierarchy is all in your head, right? So if you think the person who's reclining and is on the yoga journal cover and doing the full, you know, scorpion handstand is somehow a more enlightened human than the person who, you know, has to lay down on their side instead of reclining back, it's just not true. It's, it's a false premise. So 
we'll go into stillness and into breath. And this will be uh, seven minutes total. So just go ahead and see if you can close your eyes if you're comfortable with that. See if you can use the sensations in your body to be your focal point. Breath is always available as a focal point, but sometimes it's really interesting to go into the inner space of your body and feel as that anchor for your wild horse mind that likes to go over here and think, go into the past and into the future. So rein your wild horse mind back in to the present moment inside of your body. got about two minutes to go here. So really seeing if you can drop in a little bit deeper just by breathing deeper. Keeping it subtle, keeping it cool, but going deeper inside. We'll start to very, very slowly move the body. Again, sounding, highly recommend it. Exhaling through your mouth or making any kind of like, whew. just massaging that right knee or whichever knee you had bent if you didn't have the same one as me just kind of getting in there kneading around any tender spots um, scrubbing out the back of the knee if you want to take a fist to your low back you can scrub out your low back 
and we'll start to make our way onto our backs. And so just moving your props, okay? Moving your props out of the way, making sure that you have space to come down on your back. I want to give a quick shout out to my homegirl Kristen that gave me this cute jumper just because she loves me and she knew I was um, kind of feeling uh, down last week. So thank you to friends who drop off wine at your doorstep or coffee, um, keeping a safe social distance, and then giving you like little things that know um, will make you feel better. So she um, is a Zaya representative. If you guys are looking for yoga clothes, I really love their stuff. I have some joggers and some leggings of theirs. So you can check her out. Um, go ahead and come down onto your back. So you're just laying down on your back, nice and comfortable. Your legs can come out pretty wide. And we're just gonna bring the hands on the belly and breathe here. Closing the eyes and just seeing if you can drop even deeper into your body. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And out your mouth. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Continue to just lie and be. There's nothing to do. There's nowhere you have to be. You just get to be here now. So I'm going to read to you from one of my favorite meditation teachers and authors, Pema Chodron, and I'm going to read from one of her foundational books called How to Meditate. She's written many books that I've read and love. Uh, when Things Fall Apart was the first book I read from her back in 2013, and it completely changed my life. I would say it was one of the catalysts for my awakening. So I highly recommend Pema as a um, resource at this time. Take a deep breath in, laying on your back with your eyes closed, and a deep breath out. So this is from chapter eight and it's called The Monkey Mind. Continue to follow your breath. The nature of mind is to think. It's as natural for the mind to think as it is for the body to breathe or for the heart to pump blood through its veins. The motivation behind meditation is not to get rid of thought but to train the mind to reclaim its natural capacity to stay present. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Your mind can be placed on an object or an experience and it can stay there. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. So when I suggested in the beginning of our practice to use our breath as a focal point, that is one of those objects that you can use in the training of your mind. Go ahead and bring your knees into your chest while you're laying on your back. Keep your eyes closed and just gently rock side to side. So when we try to just focus on our breath, even for a few seconds, go ahead and let your knees fall over to the left. Just knee on top of knee. Taking a gentle twist, you can airplane out your right arm off to the side. You can always slide a block under your knees if you want. 
and just relax your feet, relax your hips. Stay in that twist with your eyes closed. And so that, that object of the breath as a focal point, right? Usually, this is what Pema says in chapter eight, when we try to do that for even a few seconds, the monkey mind or the wild horse mind goes off and takes us to the other side of the world or to something that happened a decade ago. The reason we don't just do meditation all the time is because we can't. And that's because our mind is all over the place. Our mind needs training, but we're not training our mind to be better. We're training to bring out the mind's natural wakefulness. The way we do that traditionally from the time of the Buddha onward is to meditate. We come back to our breath, we come back to our body, and we come back to our object of meditation. Bring your knees back through center. Take a deep breath in. And out. Let your knees go over to the right. Just knee on top of knee. They just gently stack. And you can airplane out your left hand with the palm facing up and just resting in the twist. So I just encourage you to use this time, especially if you have the gift of being at home. Maybe you have an extra two hours on your hands because you're not commuting into the city anymore. Maybe you could use one of those hours or both of them to start a meditation practice or a yoga practice or to deepen your meditation or yoga practice. Just breathing into your hips and into your belly, relaxing even more if you're gripping at your ankles or your hip flexors. And then bring your knees back through center. And this time I want you to curl in like a tight little ball. So curling in really, really, really tight. And then we're gonna open up for Shavasana, which I highly recommend putting a pillow or a bolster underneath your knees. And then covering yourself with a blanket, whatever you have at home. It doesn't have to be one of these yoga blankets. It can be a cozy comforter, your favorite couch blanket that you watch Homeland with at night. I don't know if that's something you do. <laughs> and just get cozy. See if you can even tuck yourself in. You can tuck yourself in. And let go of the breath control so you don't have to be rigid with your breath you don't have to follow uh, that metronome anymore of cycling the breath in and out you can just take a natural breath and I want you to give yourself permission to be here for any amount of time that you want you can Pause the video and take 15 minutes, which is what I normally do when I teach yoga, especially yin, we do 15 minute shavasanas. Or you can take a five minute shavasana if you know that you have a Zoom conference call coming and you need to get up and actually put on a blazer but keep your pajama pants on. So whatever it is that you are craving, I highly recommend the longer Shavasana and deep nourishment. Just let your body melt and relax with nothing to do. And to be very, very gentle and kind with yourself if you notice that you were thinking the entire time, at least you noticed you were thinking. So it's taking a few more deep breaths here. Aloka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu.
May all beings everywhere be free of the root of suffering. And may they know true happiness, the liberation that comes from awareness and an awakened heart. And that we as yogis and meditators would contribute to that global awakening through first waking up ourselves. Namaste.